Hello everybody, I'm Dave Chaos, and today we're going to be checking out the Enemax 128X water cooling system. Uh, we're going to be using the same old rig test bench that we've been using in the past. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying this out. It's the first liquid cooling one that we've done. All the others have been um, heat sinks with fans, so it's going to be nice to try something different. So straight away you got yourself um, the quick start guide or user's manual, whatever you want to call it, all the different uh, ways of how to mount this thing onto your uh, motherboard and just tips and stuff like that. And then underneath here we find all the bits and bobs that you're going to need for uh, mounting this. So here's the uh, cooling unit itself, so all in one piece. Right there you have what goes on to the top of your CPU, so if we just pull that out there we are. So there's that, which has also got heatsink itself on the back of it, which is uh, which is different to ones that I've seen in the past. And that goes to the radiator right here. So we just pull that out as well, so you can see what that looks like. It's got some nice accents of red on there, which I kind of like. If you're uh, going for you know um, a case with a you know side panel and you're conscious about the colour scheme of the inside of your computer, then there you go. You've got these little red accents on there, which are quite good. I like that. Nice and uh, subtle. Uh, let's get this rubbish out of the way. Uh, here's your fans. So there is two 120mm fan. Uh, obviously, you'll have this on a, a push-pull configuration, which we'll set up in a little while. And in here is your little accessories pack. So this is going to have um, the different mounts for Intel and AMD uh, and a few other bits and bobs like cabling and stuff like that. So let's see exactly what we've got in here. There we go. So we've got a whole load of screws. Got a bit of thermal paste there, which is always nice and handy. Um, yeah, it's just a massive bag of screws, extra cables, and like I say, uh, the different types of mounts are in there. It looks like it's got one black in backing plate that you can, uh, which has got all the different hole adjustments basically. So we'll have a look at this in a moment when I'm actually mounting it and see how that works out. All right, so let's go and get our trusty test bench. All right, guys, I've prepped. Uh, the test bench, uh, it's the same as previous. We have the Gigabyte 990 FXA UD3 motherboard, uh, AMD CPU, which is the FX uh, 8, uh, sorry, yes, the 8320. <laughs> uh, the same AMD RAM, which is 8 gigs of AMD RAM. And down here in that corner, we have an AMD Radeon HD 7970. So nothing's changed, it's all the same stuff. A uh, few best practices I want to talk over. I'm not trying to teach you to suck eggs, but it's a few things you want to take into consideration when you're doing an upgrade like this or a changeover. Clean the old paste off your CPU. Make sure you've got an anti-static wristband of some sort or an anti-static mat or whatever um, before you start touching all your stuff. You don't want to be blowing your, your, uh, you know, your CPU or whatever. So there's a couple of things I want to show you before we actually start mounting this thing. Um, is the choices this company have made for the mounting brackets. If I just get this in focus for you, uh, right there, it says this side for AMD. Is that in focus for you there? This side for AMD, and then it says this side for Intel, which is kind of cool because usually you tend to get uh, two different mounting brackets or, or one mounting bracket with lots of different holes on one side. Um, but what they've chosen to do is have two different sides and they give you all these extra bits. So I'll show you in a minute how this all to get, goes together. But that basically is going to go in the middle there. And we've got some pads to put in the corners here to basically protect your motherboard when it's on the other side. So I'm going to get that fitted in a moment. Um, I'm not going to show you. It's, it's super simple. It basically just goes underneath the motherboard and the screws go through. It, that is it. I don't need to show you that. It's just ridiculous. I'm, I'm not doing that. Okay, so... The fans are also really interesting. They have this really nifty little feature that I've never seen before on a, a cooler like this. And it's here. It's right here. If I... Can I... See, let's see how close I can get uh, without messing up the focus. E there. So you'll see there's this little switch. As you can see, it's got three different settings. And that actually adjusts the RPM of the fan, which I think is fantastic. So they've got what they call their silent running mode at 1300 RPM, uh, their performance mode 
at 2000 RPM and their overclock mode at 2500 RPM. And you literally just flick this little switch to adjust. And it's the same with the other fan. So here's the other fan and that's got exactly the same right there. So yeah, it's really interesting. Um, for this test, I we always test on maximum RPM. So to be in line with all the other tests we've done in the past, I'm going to leave it on maximum RPM, uh, even though it does say on here that it's the overclock mode. Uh, but during this test, we do do overclock. And um, like I say, with all the previous tests, it's always been on maximum RPM. So it wouldn't be fair to me for this video for me to be messing around with that. I'll just leave it on maximum and that's how we'll do the test. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and start mounting this thing. Um, uh, if there's anything I think you need to see, then I'll include it in the video. Otherwise, I'm just going to go ahead and get it set up. Okay, so once you've got the motherboard prepped, your uh, back plate is on, you've got these little uh, plastic things here that hold the screws in place. Very, very simple. It's a case of just, you know, following the instructions. The instructions are here. I've got them just for reference. And this is really simple. So you start with um, what you should have in your box. And then you've got your Intel. It tells you in the corner, Intel. Just go to the AMD section. And uh, you can just, it's literally step by step, you know. Any fool can follow it. <laughs> oh, just to point out as well, um, this cooler. Is compatible with the Intel LGA 775, uh, 1150, 1155, 1156, uh, 1366, and 2011. For the AMD, you've got AM2, AM2 Plus, AM3, AM3 Plus, FMI, and FMI2. All right, so that's the boring stuff out of the way. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Here's the um, radiator with the fans on a. I've got it on a pull through. Of course, I said push pull before, but you know it's basically pull through. So that way, um, very simple. And I've prepared the cooling block as well. So it comes ready fitted with the AMD brackets along the side. So I'll just show you them. Before it had these on, so they were already fitted in there. And the screws are you don't get any extra screws. You have to reuse the screws that came. Very simply, you just change those over to the AMD ones. Um, again, you know, it's all in the instructions, nice and simple. So I'm going to mount that on in a second. Don't forget, very important, to put your thermal paste on. Um, they actually provide you with this little tube, which seems to be um, quite common now. You never used to get these little thermal things. You had to go out and buy your own. So you only need a tiny, tiny amount. Again, I'm not trying to teach you how to suck eggs. Some people don't know, so it's for the benefit of them. Uh, so just a little blob right in the center and of course when you actually put the cooler on that will squash out and spread everywhere and that's all you need you can just save that little bit just in case you've balls it up <laughs> and uh, you need to do it again don't forget if you do need to do it again it's good practice to clean off the old stuff and put the new stuff on all right so we're ready for mounting and every time you have a new one it always has a plastic thing on it so remember to peel that off Otherwise, you'll get this horrible plastic burning smell coming from your CPU. And you'll be like, oh God, what have I done? All right, so let's get this mounted in. As you can see, it's a little bit fiddly because the pipes are attached. Um, but not as fiddly as we've had in the past. So all we want to do is very gently line these up. Because they're only held in place with these little rubber stoppers. And once that's on, you're good to start bolting them in. And... Uh, Silly me, I've not got my bolts ready. So, for the AMD, let's just grab one. For AMD, you have these bolts. They've got a little spring on them, as you can see. And uh, you don't want to tighten them up super tight right now. You just want to get them on um, so they've got a grip. Once you've got all four on, then you can tighten them up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So here are the results from the test. These are the results for a no power save mode, not overclocked. Um, so we got an idle temperature of 25 degrees and uh, with load 37 degrees. You can see that compares to the last one we did, which was the Dark Rock Pro 3, which has got an idle of 27 and with load 43. So it's performed a quite a bit better, um, which I'd expect to see from a liquid cooling unit. And then we overclocked the system. So with the overclock results, um, we've added a little extra in there. Now, remember how the fans had the different settings? So I actually test it on its lowest setting, 
fan speed and its maximum setting. So on maximum we had um, a result of 47 degrees and on its lowest setting we had 51 which still outperformed the Dark Rock Pro 3 even on its lowest setting. There we have it, there's the results. So as you can see they're a lot cooler than uh, the previous ones we've done in the past. It's what I expect from a liquid cooling unit. They're always a little bit better. Um, these especially I like because you've got the little fan settings and stuff like that. I know you can change um, fan speed like with programs and stuff like that, but the fact that you can do it with the fans as well, I think that's a nice little added extra, and you're definitely getting the RPM that it says on there. So one of the things I wanted to point out about these settings is um, the maximum setting. The damn thing sounds like a hoover. So if you're conscious about noise levels, um, on the maximum setting it is extremely loud now it's not necessarily a downside depending on what you're doing with the machine that you're overclocking um, but the results for the lower end it's so much more quieter like really quiet so um, the results from the be quiet one which was a very good heatsink for what it is um, was also super super quiet it's probably the quietest form out of them all um, this one was pretty close contender on its lowest setting. I think it's 1300 RPM, so you know, it's going to be quiet and it still managed to outperform the Be Quiet. So, you know, take from that what you will. Um, I've been very impressed by this uh, heatsink, so we do have another one to test uh, that will come in another video, which is the 240. Uh, it's, it's almost the same design, but the the uh, radiator is a little bit longer so it's spread out and it's meant to go at the top of your um, your case rather than at the back like this one. So I'm going to rate this, I'm going to give this uh, a gold award because you know it's just ticked all the boxes on all fronts. Um, I like the little extra settings that you've got the performance mode and low mode and overclock mode even though it's a little little too loud for overclock mode but like I say you know it doesn't need to be on its maximum RPM because its performance is so good that it's done better than all the other tests that we've done. So, you know, you could quite comfortably have it on medium and have your system overclocked and still get good temperatures. So that's why I'm giving it a gold award. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you rate it, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.